Good evening, everyone. I'm Rick Jackson. And I'm Lydia Spara. Welcome to Help Still Wanted. Unemployment and the economy are the top concerns of people in Northeast Ohio, and for that matter, all over the country, at least according to the results of a Gallup poll released last week. And Rick, to the question, what do you think is the most important problem facing the country today? 58% of the people polled said unemployment or our struggling economy. And by the way, 7% mentioned health care and just 3% said education. Over the next hour, we will focus a bright spotlight on this number one concern. You will hear personal stories of people in our region who have lost their jobs, how it's affected them, and what they've learned. And you will hear from local experts about our employment outlook and the best strategies for finding work. And Rick, people from the community organizations who can help are waiting to talk to you to offer guidance and information about available local resources from career counseling to placement, assistance to bill paying. Call anytime during the show. The number is 800-473-2525. We can also send you information in the mail, including a brochure we created that is full of information about resources in our area. And Lydia, it's no surprise that these days unemployment is one of our biggest worries. When will things get better? Well, that is the $64,000 question. And if you look at recent data from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, it's pretty clear. All signs point to a sluggish recovery for the worst economic downturn in this country since the Great Depression. For the second month in a row, unemployment in the United States holds steady at 9.5%. That translates into more than 14 million people who are unemployed, with more than 6 million of those people considered long-term unemployed, meaning they have been jobless for 27 weeks or more. And over the last three months, an estimated 1 million Americans have left the labor force and stopped looking for work. The manufacturing, education, and health services industries show signs of promise, while jobs in financial services, construction, and state and local governments are declining. Last week, a Labor Department report stated that first-time claims for jobless benefits in the United States went up in July by 2,000 people. The total now stands at 484,000, the highest it's been since February. Many analysts had expected that number to drop in July, but unfortunately, they were wrong. We'll analyze the job market trends in our region in just a moment. First, be sure to call if you need help. We have phone volunteers all around here in the studio right now who can connect you with local resources that can help you. Maybe you need help paying bills or brushing up on your resume or maybe you're just feeling frustrated or depressed and you just don't know where to go for help. Call 800-473-2525. Our phone volunteers will be here throughout the show and will stick around for an hour after the show. Help is just a phone call away. Again, that number is 800-473-2525. Rick? So what is the job outlook here in Northeast Ohio? How does the unemployment picture in our region compare to other places around the state, the Midwest? These are the kinds of questions my two guests ask themselves all the time. Mark Schweitzer is Senior Vice President and Director of Research at the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. Dr. Schweitzer holds both a master's degree and PhD in economics from UCLA. Ned Hill is an economist and dean of the Levin College of Urban Affairs at Cleveland State University. He earned his doctorate in urban and regional planning and economics from MIT. And thank you both for being here. Welcome, Rick. Ned, if you listen to Columbus, we've got jobs just sprouting all over the place. But if you listen to all those people that would like to replace the governor and his job and other jobs, we're shedding jobs at heretofore unknown levels. So what's the truth out there? Well, uh, you know, never pay attention to political ads unless you've got some data behind you. Uh, the, the truth of what's happening in the state right now is that the state is underperforming the nation. Uh, surprisingly enough, the Cleveland region has been doing a bit better than the nation for about a year. Uh, that The unemployment problems in the state are heavily rooted in the small to mid-sized metro areas and desperate, desperately um, the Appalachian region has some desperate problems. Mm -hmm. uh, and surprisingly enough, manufacturing is leading the rebound, but with some you know, small numbers. And two-thirds of the manufacturing growth job gain in the state took place in Northeast Ohio. Yeah, we're going to talk about manufacturing specifically in a second. Mark, does the labor drive the economy? Or is the economy driving what we need for labor right now? Well, I mean, uh, from a labor's perspective, it's definitely the economy that drives labor. Right. But if you're thinking about how does our economy get better, we need to have jobs too. It, it's kind a of chicken and egg but they go together. And it's kind of tough to talk about the end of the recession without people being employed. 
But when people look at the history of the record, my guess is they're going to say that the recession ended a year ago about this time. Uh, it just doesn't feel like it. When we look at all the numbers, and I quoted some out there, roughly 35% of people say they're completely unhappy and pessimistic. Mm -hmm. Economic doldrums right now really have people thinking this isn't going to get any better. Well, I think uh, that's a common holding, you know, that you feel like uh, it's not going to be better. That is the normal state for this part of the business cycle. You've got some improvements. Right. We project some more gradual improvements. But, you know, as our bank president has been saying for the last year, we expect a gradual and bumpy path out. And, it, and it, that doesn't give you a lot of comfort. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, we're not surprised. Policy is quite accommodative, whether monetary or fiscal policy, both are quite accommodative mm -hmm. and trying to make the, the move out of this recession. And, and if you really look at what the forecasts were when the recession really started, it was pretty consistent that late 2013, early 2014, before we get to the level of jobs we had before the recession started. Uh, but the question for all of us is the composition, the types of jobs we have are going to look very different going out than coming in. and. Um, this is really taking, this is hurting um, the places where the finance industry and the construction industry were leading. Yeah, when we talk about real estate, it's location, location, location. When we talk about Ohio, it's manufacturing, manufacturing, manufacturing. We've got some graphics here. Mm -hmm. Some of the situations we find ourselves in right now comparing Ohio to the United States, first showing that difference. What gets your attention, Mark? The gap between us and the nation or the steadiness of the gap year to year? Well, I, I mean, we've definitely been following both. I mean, the interesting thing is if I went back further than this data, I would have seen periods of time where Ohio's unemployment was considerably higher than the right. nation. We had some successes. We had some progress. It turns out the sort of 2000 to 2006 period was not that great for Ohio. Right. We've seen some data recently that, you know, point to, uh, you know, some gains in our strength. So, uh, you know, it's, it's always a mixed picture, but uh, I mean, Ohio is a little more manufacturing right. concentrated and relative performance, you know, reflects that. Let's and, move on to the next one because we want to make another comparison here. This is Ohio as compared to the states around us. Mm -hmm. It's not just the U.S. where we flounder. Our competitors, with the exception of Michigan, which is car dependent, manufacturing states east and west of us, Pennsylvania and Iowa in this example, have better employment numbers than we do. Mm -hmm. Is there something that we're doing wrong that you know Harrisburg and Des Moines are doing that Columbus isn't? Well, interesting enough, we've got a large contract for the state of Pennsylvania to look at their manufacturing strategy, and they gave it to us about two months ago. Um, they aren't feeling wonderful and rosy. The, the, the ish, if you look at Iowa, it's clear what's going on. Farm, farm states have done well and places that do oil and gas extraction have done well. Part of what's happening in, in Pennsylvania in particular is with the discovery of the Marshallis Shale region. You've had an uptick in employment over the past four or five months related to, to uh, developing that resource. Yeah, huge story in Pennsylvania. Yeah, I would say, I mean, Iowa's unemployment rate is normally low. Uh, the reason why it's normally low is partially reflects its demographics. Mm -hmm. Iowa has a lot of older workers. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't have so many young people. Florida and Texas can have quite dynamic labor markets, but they always have high unemployment rates too. Right. So you want to be careful in these sort of state-to-state -state comparisons. It's, okay. it, it, you know, we're, we're, in it, we're starting a gubernatorial race, and where governors and the numbers take, fluctuate. fluctuate. And when the governors, things are going good, the governors take the credit. When things are going bad, the governor takes a hit. The fact is, this is a national recession. Absolutely. And what we are feeling in Ohio is really cause, is really is the aftershock of the auto industry falling apart, the financial services mm -hmm. industry getting a body blow, and speculative overbuilding in real estate in the southeast and the southwest. We well, both made the point that it is national and we shouldn't compare state to state. So let's look at what's happening right. within Ohio right now. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say, well, the rural states or the rural parts of the state think that unemployment is a big city issue. So we compared the three largest counties mm -hmm. population wise and the three smallest counties. Cleveland, Columbus, and Cincinnati compared to the counties that host Caldwell, Woodsfield, and MacArthur. And yes, I did have to look those up as <laughs> counties. <laughs> and, and congratulations, <laughs> you got the most rural part of Appalachia in there. Yeah, right. and that is the small, one of the smaller counties. But right. when you look at that graphic, it's the rural counties up here mm -hmm. and the metro counties. And, and there's a good reason for it. First is coal production in Ohio because of high sulfur content doesn't do well. Two, uh, the education rates in those, in, in those parts of the state are very poor, but they're still high cost areas, so that routine, non-technical manufacturing has got taken a body blow down there. Um, and uh, the third thing is that they are tourism dependent, and tourists have been sitting on their wallet. No big surprise, 
The other thing is, while these percentages look high, the absolute numbers are relatively small, and the unemployment rates in the parts of Appalachia you're looking at really are driven by what's happening at the outer edges of the Columbus and the Cincinnati metropolitan area. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. Ned Hill, Mark Schwartz, Schweitzer, thank you so much for being here. You're Thank welcome, you. Rick.